Hey designers, this is Jax. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a very fun one. This is a door and uh, I'm going to show you how to create this door from scratch. Um, so let me dive in and show you exactly what this thing can do. All right, so I'm just going to go and open the main form. So we have here our custom form and what we can do is we can basically control the opening of the door, right, like this. And uh, we can also type it in here, whatever we want. Okay, then we can basically control the handing of the door. So we can say the door is left hand or right hand. Okay, like this. And then notice we can still open the door. Doesn't matter if you change the handing. Okay, and then we can also control the wall thickness. So little diagram here shows you a wall, basically. So that's just representing the wall. This is the door frame over here. And then we've got a list of predetermined wall thicknesses. Okay, so I can make this thing 100 more wide or 110, 220, 222. 330 okay so we can control that also we can control door size uh, we can say here we want the door to be 850 or we can change the height here uh, we can say the door needs to be 2.2 meters okay in tall and then we've got an indication of the of the wall cutout size over here all right and that's basically what we're going to do today and um, this is going to be a series of videos so the plan for this tutorial is we're gonna basically create the model right and then we're gonna have more parts so we're gonna have part one part two part three and we're just gonna build on the door okay so in part one we're just going to have the model as you see it here and then what we're going to do is in part two is we're just going to build the form okay for the model and then in part three we would convert the model to a double door so the one that you see here is a single door okay so the double door would be just conditions that we're going to add so if if the width of the door is more than a certain width then it's just going to convert it to a double door automatically okay and then the one after that we're just going to have uh, different types of doors as well all right so let's just start designers my sincerest apologies for making this video so long I'm going to show you something that I have done is a basically a, a document, right? So you can download this document. This document also takes you step by step how to create this model. It's best to use this document in conjunction with uh, the video itself. So in that way you get a very clear understanding why we do things and how we do it. And also just to follow your own pace um, while, while the video is going on. All right. So, and this is all step by step. So you can start with step one and step two, and you, you'll see this, this basically follows the video exactly. All right. So I actually used this document to, to create the video as well. So you should be able to, to, um, to follow me like that. Okay. All right. So let's start. I'm going to, I'm going to close this down and we're going to start from scratch. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is also in where the document is in the same link as the document, you will see there is a zip file uh, with a document and then you have these files as well. Okay, so these are just the generic stuff that we normally put in um, door locks and stuff. I'm not going to show you how to draw these. If you don't know how to model, there are plenty of, of YouTube videos on how to model. 
All right, so we're just going to steal a couple of these models here. I did create this especially for you, but uh, we have hinges, we have uh, the door panel is not supposed to be here. I'm going to take that out. The door lock and the latch, key cover, backing plate, and door handle. So we have a total of eight files here that we're going to be using in this model. So if you downloaded the zip file, just dump these files anywhere you like, uh, where you're working. All right. So we are going to need this later. All right. So I'm going to jump back into Inventor and then we're going to start off with new. All right. I'm going to be using the metric, metric standard IPT, right? Millimeter. Go create. All right. So let's just go ahead and save this for now. Uh, I'm just going to dump it basically where I'm actually doing this tutorial. All right, so where these files are, I'm just going to dump everything in there. So I'm just going to call this one frame. All right, so then I'm just going to hit save. Okay, so we've got our frame model here. And then I'm going to start off with a couple of parameters. So you'll see this little FX button at the top here. Let's go and open that. And then we have our blank parameter window here. So we're going to add our first parameter. So this one would be a numeric. So we're just going to hit this add numeric button here. And we're going to call this one wall underscore thickness. All right. We're going to change this to 220. All right. Just for now. All right. And then we're going to add another one. We're going to call this one door underscore width. Okay. We're going to change this to 750 just for now. All right, and then another one, we're going to call this one door underscore height. And we're going to change this one to two meters. And then for now, we're going to add our last one. This one is going to be a text parameter. Uh, so that's little drop down icon next to add numeric. We're going to hit that and say add text. I'm going to call this one handing. All right. And just for now, we're going to set this to LHS, stands for left hand side. All right. And then I'm just going to hit done here. All right. So then we're going to add our first sketch here or we'll start one. Uh, we're going to just take a normal 2D sketch here. I'm just going to hit it on the front plane here, X, Y plane. And then I'm just going to put three lines down. So the first line here. Just like this, this is just going to represent the inner frame of the door. All right. And then I'm just going to do the basic constraints to the center or the origin. So I'm just going to tap it, uh, the vertical constraint to the center here. And then I'm just going to take the bottom of the frame and also constrain it horizontally to the origin. Just like that. All right. Okay. So then we're just going to add our two dimensions. And then we're going to constrain these two dimensions to those parameters that we just set up. So I'm just going to edit this one here. I'm going to hit that little arrow over there. And I'm just going to say this one would be the door width. All right. And then go done. And then this one over here. Same. This would be door height. And just go done. Okay. So then this one is finished. So I can just finish the sketch. All right, so then we're going to add another sketch. This one, we're just going to do on the ground. All right, so this plane here, X, Z plane represents the ground for our frame. So we're just going to hit it there. And then I'm just going to move it around a bit. I'm just going to project the geometry for that leg over there. So we want to use this leg to constrain this sketch. All right, so I'm just going to start adding the basic profile for it. So like that, a little kink, it's going to continue through. Uh, this is our basic geometry. Okay. Then I'm just going to add a couple of dimensions to this. So this one would be 12 and don't worry, you'll be able to see the sketch in the document as well. All right. And then here, that one there is also 47 and then here is 
16. And then we're just going to do a collinear constraint here from that one to that one there. Right. And then I'm just going to take an equal constraint from that one to that one. All right. Just want to see if that's fine. All right. Then I'm going to take this one here. Now this dimension here would be linked to our wall thickness. That one over there. Okay. And I'm just going to say from that edge to this one here is the wall thickness divided by two. Okay. Like that. All right. So I'm just going to add a fillet, right? Feature here in the sketch. So I like to do it in the sketch. It just makes your tree on the left here. Um, a bit less. So I'm just going to add it here in the sketch. I'm just going to take the fillet, set it to four. And then this profile here represents the outside of our frame. Okay. So, uh, the, the corners would all be four millimeter. Um, if I just go and complete this. All right. So then I'm just going to take this. I'm going to offset it. So I just press the O or offset over there. I'm just going to offset it to the inside like this. Okay, and I'm just going to close the ends off like that. All right, and I'm just going to give it a thickness, and this would be 1.6, and this is now fully constrained. Okay, so this sketch just needs one more dimension. Uh, this dimension is just going to be a reference one, so I'm just going to apply the dimension on this line. Uh, sorry, on this line. Uh, to the origin like this. Okay. Uh, we are going to over constrain the, the sketch now. So that's fine. We just go accept. All right. And that's the, basically the driven dimension here. Okay. I'm just going to go finish sketch and I'm going to go to my parameters and that driven dimension is here. Okay. So I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call this one half underscore width. All right, and that's basically it. So this dimension we are gonna use um, in the assembly. All right, so then we're gonna apply a sweep feature. So the sweep over there, um, our profile is already selected and we're just gonna select the inner frame contour really. Okay, like this and everything is fine. So we're just gonna go okay. And there is our basic frame. All right, so we're just going to rename the feature here. We're going to call this one body. Okay, so then we're just going to start adding the holes for the hinges. All right, so those hinges, they basically protrude this face over here. And then I think what they do is they, they spot weld them on the inside, on the inner frame like this. All right, so we're just going to add those cutouts for the hinges and then that will basically allow us to, to constrain the hinges in those cutouts. All right, so the face we want to basically sketch on is if we just go apply sketch is you'll see the front, right? The front there. So the absolute front face here. So we're just going to sketch on that. All right, so the first one is going to be the right hand side. So it's actually on this face, it's the left hand side, but the right hand side, we're going to call it that because if you walk in the door from this side, right? So the opposite from where the door is, if we walk in this side, that is your right hand side over there. Okay. So I'm just going to create our cutouts here. Uh, I'm just going to project the, the geometry for the inside of this face, right? So you'll see that little bump out. We're going to just select the in side of that bump. All right. So we're just going to select the face here. And then that's basically well, what we want to see. It's, it's two millimeters off or 1.6 from this face here. Okay. Then I'm just going to apply the rectangle feature and then snap it to the, the line that we projected. And then the same on this side here. Okay. And then I'm just going to go to the equal constraint the length basically on these two cutouts there. All right. And then I'm just going to add the dimension. This one is a hundred. 
and then this one should be 100 as well. I'm just going to make this one from the floor. I'm going to give it uh, 150, right, like that. And then I'm just going to add the thickness to these rectangles. Uh, this is a 2 mil thick, so our hinge is also 2 mil thick. Okay, so then this one is fully constrained, that's fine. This one, we're just going to add the dimension to the top, and that would be the, the visible face from the top, right? And this one wouldn't be 150, this one is 153.4. Okay, it's just to counter for the gaps uh, from the door as well. So the hinges would be 150 from, from the edge of the door itself, the panel. Okay, so with the gap included there, that would be the 3.4 overlap that you see here. Okay, uh, just also need to add the collinear constraint to these two lines here. Okay, so then this one is fully constrained as well. Okay, then I'm just going to finish the sketch. So then I'm just going to apply the extrusion feature right to these two rectangles. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to select this one here. And then I'm just going to say the extents is to the center plane. So I'm just going to go to the origin and that would be the X, Y plane here. Okay, like that. And I'm just going to say this is the cut right just like that and i'm just going to go okay so then it basically put in these grooves for us here like you can see it there okay so then i'm just going to rename this feature here to right hand side hinge cut just like that and then i'm just going to suppress it so i'm just going to right click on it and i'm just going to go suppress so what we're going to do is we're going to build our list here. So whatever we put in, so this is the right hand side hinge cut. We're going to add the left hand side as well. And then we just keep on suppressing them. And then in our rules, basically the rules would unsuppress them according to which parameters we, we choose. All right. So then we're going to do the same for the left hand side. So we're going to draw the same geometry on the, on the other side. So I'm going to project this face again. I'm going to put in the two rectangles again. All right, I'm just going to add the equal constraint. All right, I'm just going to apply the thickness and then the offset here and this one here. That's 100. This is 153.4. Uh, just drag this one up. I'm just going to apply the 150 at the bottom. All right. Then I'm just going to extrude these two as well. Cut. And then we're going to go to the mid plane. All right. Uh, cut feature. That's fine. And then we're also just going to rename it to left hand side hinge cut all right and then we're just also going to suppress this one okay so we're just going to add another 2d sketch so what we want to do is we want to sketch on this face over here all right so i hope you can see that clearly so this face we're just going to apply it over there and then we're just going to place a point anywhere and then we're just going to add a dimension to the floor and that is 1025 so we won't be changing this in the R logic rules okay and then from the point to the front face so if you look at this face over here the front one okay then this one we're going to put 20 all right and then i'm just going to finish the sketch then i'm going to apply a hole feature so the hole feature would be 20 diameter and I'm just going to leave it at 8 depth, right? Uh, I'm not going to say through all because then it would actually cut the small portion through this flange over here. All right, I know for a fact that the 8 millimeter will work. So I know that the wall thickness won't be more than 8. This one won't be reducing in the cut path of the cut. So that's fine. I'm just going to go OK. And then there's our hole. OK, so then I'm just going to rename this feature. I'm just going to say lock hole right hand side. Because if you look at it, 
from the front, from the from the front edge over here, this angle front there on the cube, um, that would be the right hand side. Okay. All right, then I'm just going to right click on it and say suppress. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same for the other side as well. So I'm just going to duplicate what we've done now, just on the opposite side. So from there to there is 20, and from there to there is 1025. Okay, and then I'm just going to apply the whole feature again. Uh, same values, that's fine. And then here I'm just going to copy that one, I'm going to paste it here, and then just call it left hand side. All right, and then right click and say suppress. Perfect. All right, so then what we're going to do now is create our first rule. All right, so in your rules tab, okay, in the blank space, right click and say add rule. Okay, I'm going to call this one handing. Okay. Okay, so just a quick introduction how this window work. Um, this is your snippet panel on the left here. Um, so there would be a couple that we would grab from this later on. Uh, this is just a small little template of, of rule sets that we can use from this. So you would see how we do that. And this little panel over here, this is actually the, the feature list and the parameter list and all that. That's the, the panel we're going to use the most to get information from. Okay. Uh, this panel over here is basically, if we go to the user parameters there, you'll see the parameter list uh, pops up here. So this is just some more detail about the feature or parameters on the left. Okay, so if I go to body there, you can just basically see all the information pertaining to the body. Okay, and so forth. I will also be showing you how to use search and replace in this lesson. Um, we're going to be using this a little bit later on as well. So. I'm not going to do that now. In this panel over here, this is basically where all the rules go. All right, so we'll be doing most of the typing and pasting and all that in, in this panel over here. All right, so I'm just going to start off with this rule here. I'm going to add a if, right? So an if is an if, then, and end if. All right, so you'll see exactly what this does, but um, the first thing you'll notice is has a red if okay so the red is actually the command um, for the condition so then we're just going to say here handing all right so i typed in handing like this now but if you go to your user parameters here you can see there's handing as well so i'm just going to delete this part here and i'm just going to select handing over there and i'm going to double click that and it does the same thing all right so you can add your parameters just by double clicking from from here and it will just show up in your in your rules panel okay so i'm just going to go equal and then in quotes all right we're going to be doing text in quotes so whenever we do text uh, we always put it in quotes all right so we know that our handing is right hand side and left hand side okay so like this one here handing right hand side there is another way. So if I just go down here and I right click on this handing here and I say capture current state, you see this phrase is actually the same there. Okay. So there's your couple of ways of doing that. And then I'm just going to say here, then, all right? Also change the rate. So that's the if and the then, all right? And then what we want to do is we want to basically tell inventor if this handing here selected right hand side right if this handing is equals to right hand side then we want inventor to do something basically all right so what we want inventor to do is the following we want to grab these features all right and tell inventor what to do with these features in this condition okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to add them build the list and then i'll tell you exactly what we're going to do with them so I'm just going to right click on this first one. So this is the first feature we created, the extrusion. I'm going to right click on it and say capture current state. And then you'll see all the information pertaining to this feature. All right. So I'm just going to take the first part here. I don't need this. So I'm just going to simply delete it. Okay. And then also this part here, these are just parameters that goes with your extrusion. I'm going to take them and delete them as well. Okay. So that's the first feature. 
and then we can do the same with the second one all right and then we can do the same with the fourth and then the fifth as well okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to basically set the outputs based on this condition so we we would know which features to turn on and off uh, if the handing selected right hand side okay so the right hand side hinge cut we actually need that when we select right hand side currently it's set to false all right so remember we suppressed everything so because we suppressed it by default it would say that is false all right so we want to change this we want to basically say if we did select the right hand side on the user parameter here if we did select right hand side we actually want to display this or unsuppress this feature here all right or that one there okay so the way to do that is we just simply say it's true all right so this feature now is true okay and the left hand side hinge cut we actually want this to be off or suppressed and then in that case we would just remain false all right and then lock hole right hand side so this is right hand side that's right hand side there so that would also become true okay and then left hand side here would also be false so if it's right hand side we just switch on this the the parameters that says right hand side here okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to copy this i'm going to paste it down all right i'm going to delete the first part here i'm just going to type in else all right so this is an extension to a, a if then and end if so this is basically saying if it's one condition then you basically normally for a very simple end if statement you're going to say end if here like that all right i'm just going to delete this this is a normal uh, a very basic uh, if statement here all right but what we're doing is we're actually extending it so within the extension we're saying else all right there is another way as well uh, we only have two conditions so that's why we go else but there is another way as well if you have more than two outcomes you basically do it like this so you would say else if the handing is left hand side okay it would be the same in our case because we only have the two conditions it would be the same just to simply say else all right anything other than right hand side okay so we're just gonna then change the outputs based on on this condition so if it's not right hand side then we want to switch off right hand side here okay i'm going to switch this one off as well uh, sorry false okay and then what we want to do if it's not right hand side is we want to switch on the left hand side so it's just basically a flip side to these over here okay and then with our conditions met and all that we're just going to then tell it to end it off by saying end if all right so we always end the the if conditions with end if all right so we are finished with this rule here and then we're just going to go save and run now notice on the left hand here these two switched on automatically okay so I'm just going to go to the parameters. I'm going to change this to LHS. I'm going to hit enter and then just keep your eye on this list over here. So I'm going to hit enter now. So you notice they flipped around. So that is our rule that did this. Okay. I'm going to suppress this rule quick. I'm just going to right click on it and say suppress. So this rule isn't active anymore. And then I'm just going to go back to RHS right hand side and nothing is happening here. You see that so that's now not really being controlled so i'm just going to unsuppress this i'm going to do the same right hand side and it's actually working now again all right so left hand side so i'm going to leave it at left hand side i'm going to go say done all right and then i'm just going to save it and then i'm just going to close this model we are actually done with this model here so then next we're going to start with the door panel okay so i'm just going to do exactly the same i'm just going to open a new standard millimeter ipt 
Okay, I'm going to save this one again. So I'm just going to go save, and then I'm just going to go to my my area, and I'm just going to rename this. So I'm going to call this door panel. Okay, the naming of these models are very important because we are actually going to use these names a bit later on as well. So try and follow me with the names. Um, if you do want to select your own naming, basically I would recommend do it like I do it now. And then if you wanted to change it, and then it's just easier to change it later on um, if you want to change your names. All right, so I'm just going to go save. Um, I did create this before, so I'm just going to say replace, yes. All right, so now we're going to create a new parameter. We're going to add a numeric, and we're going to call this one width and we're going to set this one to 750 okay so we're going to do another one add numeric again we're going to call this one height and we're going to set this one to two meter okay then we're going to add another one this one is going to be text so we're going to say this one is handing and uh, like before we're going to enter lhs left hand side Okay, so we're going to go done here and we're going to start a new sketch. So 2D sketch again on the front plane here, the X, Y plane. Then I'm going to drop down a two point center rectangle. Just like that. Then I'm going to put a dimensions for this. So the two dimensions, this one, I'm just going to link this one to the list parameters to the width. And this one here would be the height. So list and go height, go done. All right, and then I'm just gonna finish the sketch. And then I'm just gonna add a extrusion feature, All right? I'm gonna make this one 40. I'm gonna go to the symmetrical offset, All right? Then I'm just gonna go okay. And then I'm just gonna rename this one to thickness all right so then i'm just going to apply another sketch a 2d sketch on this face over here okay so now we're going to create our cuts for the hinges as well so then i'm just going to select the two point rectangle and then i'm just going to place two rectangles down here and snap it to the to the bottom edge here okay i'm just going to add a constraint the equal constraint I'm just going to select these two lines here and then again the collinear constraint the same two lines okay then i'm just going to add a couple of dimensions i'm going to take it from this edge to this one this one was going to be 150 and the same with this one here so 150 and then i'm just going to add the length which is 100 okay and then just this one over here would be 30. All right, so everything is constrained. So I'm just going to finish the sketch. And then I'm going to apply another extrusion over there and over there. All right, so I'm just going to add the cut. And then I'm just going to say this one is three more in depth. Then I'm just going to go OK. All right, so these are two hinge cutouts. All right, then I'm just going to rename this extrusion here. I'm just going to call this one RHS, right hand side hinges, hinges. Okay, and then I'm just going to suppress it. So right click and say suppress. Then I'm just going to add another sketch on the same face. Right, we're going to basically do the same thing just for the for the left hand side. So I'm just going to drop the two rectangles down. This time we're just snapping it to the top line instead of the bottom line. Okay, so I'm just gonna constrain the two collinear here. Okay, that's already done, so that's fine. I'm just gonna make this one 100 again. Also 150 to the side. Uh, this one would be 30. And this one is 150 as well. Okay, then everything is constrained, so I'm just going to finish the sketch and then apply the extrusion again and select the two rectangles here and then go cut and OK. And then we're going to also rename it and basically make it 
left hand side all right i'm gonna suppress this one as well okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the holes for the locks so we're just gonna add a 2d sketch and then just get on sketch on this face here um, the front plane face here and then we're just going to put two points down like that and i'm just going to vertically constrain these two points to each other and then um, what we want to do is we just want to see where the hinges are so the hinges is on this side and the locks would be on the opposite side of the hinges like that and then i'm just going to add the dimension to the edge like this and i'm just going to say this is 75 and then from there to the bottom so this would represent our bottom or our floor edge really and that would be 1025 and then the distance between the two holes would be a hundred okay and then everything is fully constrained so i'm just going to go finish sketch okay so next we're going to apply the hole feature right for the two holes here uh, we are going to select through all for the termination so that's fine and then here the distance or the diameter of the holes is going to be 25 and then just go OK. OK, so then we're just going to rename this hole one here. We're going to call it lock holes. OK, so there wouldn't be any handing uh, for the holes here because it's the same for both sides. OK, so we're going to add the chamber hole for the lock itself. OK, so we're going to create a 2D sketch and select this edge over here just next to the holes and then I'm just going to add the two point center rectangle on this face here just like that and then I'm just going to constrain it vertically between the center of the rectangle and then the center of the model and then I'm just going to add two dimensions this one would be 30 and this one would be 50 okay and then the dimension to the floor so the center of the rectangle to the floor this would be 1025 okay if you look at it like this it's in the center or in the same plane as the hole here okay and then i'm just going to add the the fillet over here i'm going to set it to four like that and then just select the corners just like this okay and then go finish sketch and then i'm just going to extrude and then i'm just going to apply the cut here all right, and then just go OK. This is 90, so that's fine. So we just go OK. All right, just like this. OK, and I'm just going to rename the extrusion here. I'm just going to call it lock chamber. OK, then what we want to do is just to create the, the inset for the lock itself. Um, so the lock is, has a little flange that goes around. So we just want to create the matching um, inset for that. So I'm just going to go and project the geometry for this. And then I'm just going to go to offset and just offset the rectangle like this. And then I'm just going to apply a 2.5 millimeter offset like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to extrude this over there, cut it. And we're going to apply a two millimeter cut and then go OK. All right. Just like that. Okay, then I'm just going to rename the extrusion again. Um, this one would be lock inset. Okay, so our model is done. So now we can start adding rules. Okay, so this one only has one rule, so it's fine. It's a very short one. So I'm just going to go to the rules tab and in the empty space, right click, add rule. And I'm going to call it handing. Okay. And then we're just going to start with a, with a if, then an end if. So I'm just going to go if. So we want handing. So double click handing equals quotes right hand side. Then. So what we want to do is we want to control the, the hinges. Okay. So the cuts for the hinges, these two. So I'm just going to right click and say capture, delete what we don't need. Okay, I'm just going to copy this one, paste it here, and then just go LHS, all right? And then I'm just going to copy this, go down and go paste, 
and I'll just say else instead and and if okay so we want to switch on the right hand side for this condition so the right hand side is the first line here so that would become true okay and then in left hand or any other than right hand would be there so that's true okay so if it's right hand we switch on right hand here if it's not right hand then we switch on left hand side here okay so this was a nice short and sweet one and then we go seven run okay so notice the lhs hinges here appeared that's fine so if we just go and just quickly test it so we go rhs just keep an eye on the rhs hinges there go enter so that worked that's fine and you go back to lhs and then that also works fine okay go done then i'm just going to save this model and then we actually finish with it so then i'm just going to go and exit okay so now finally we can create our assembly model so i'm just going to go new and then uh, the metric here i'm just going to create the standard millimeter aim and go create okay i'm just going to save this so i'm just going to go save and then I'm just going to place it where I'm working on this uh, tutorial. And um, this would be door. That's fine. I already created it. So I'm just going to go save and overwrite it. Yes. And then we're going to start placing our models. Okay. So we're going to go to place. And then I'm just going to go find my models here. Okay. So the first one would be the frame. So I need the frame. And of course, we're only going to have one frame, so that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to reset my home here. I'm just going to basically turn it where I want. And then I'm just going to go right click and go fit to view. So now this front is fine. That's perfect. The top is all right. OK, so that's fine. OK, so next we're going to place our hinges. So uh, we're just going to grab the hinge.aim. And then we're going to place it down four times. All right. And then next we need our door panel. So I'm just going to go grab the door panel. And of course, we only need one of them. Next up is the door lock. So let's go grab our door lock over here. And we need two of them. And then we're going to go back and we need the door latch, the lock latch here and also two of them okay and then we need the key cover so also two key covers okay and then also we need the backing plate two of those okay and then we need the handles so two handles as well okay so these are all the files we need okay so the first thing we want to do is take the four hinges all right, so select the four hinges from the browser bar here. We're going to go right click and then say flexible. OK, so you notice the icon there next to all the hinges. This basically just allows us to be able to manipulate them here straight from this assembly instead of going into the sub assembly and manipulate it there. OK, and then next up, what we need to do is to create a custom level of detail. So we are going to be suppressing some parts and all that. So Inventor wouldn't allow you to suppress if you don't have a custom level of detail. So here under representations, we're just going to expand that. And then here under the master level of detail, we're just going to right click there and then say new level of detail. OK, we're going to expand it and then rename this to iLogic. Shucks, I can't spell I logic right okay and then just minimize those okay so we are going to start constraining our parts together the first thing we need to do is just to make sure that our frame and our door panel uh, the handing on both of them are the same so i'm going to start with right hand side so i'm just going to open the panel first i'm going to set the handing to right hand side Okay, go down, save it. Uh, this is just an error I get because I'm using Dropbox. So it's not an important error. And then the frame 
as well. Let's open that and then change it to right hand side as well. Go done, save and exit. Okay, and then just update and then we can start constraining. So the first items we want to start with the constraints are the hinges. Okay, so I'm just going to do the place constraint. And then what I want to do is you can basically select any hinge you want. I'm just going to start with the top one here. I'm just going to right click and then say select other. So I need the internal face on this flap over here. And then you will notice the the grooves we did on the frame for the hinges. So if you look on the inside of the frame here, then you need to place that face to the bump face here. Okay. So I'm just going to select the face there and then it's just a normal mate constraint. So I'm just going to go, okay. And then we just need to see which one. Okay. So this face here, that was the one that we constrained. So now, we need to do a mate from this face here to, let's say, that one there. Okay, so that's fine. And then uh, we just need one more constraint. Uh, that would be the flush constraint. So it would be flush from this face to the front face of the frame, just like that. Okay, and that's fine. So this is now finished. And then we're just going to do the same with the bottom one. So I'm just going to select the internal face there and select the bump face there. Okay. And just for orientation. Okay. That's okay. So I can just apply mate from this face to this one here. Okay. And then the last flush constraint from that face to the front face of the frame. And that's okay. All right. So then our two hinges are up and that's perfect. Okay, then we're just going to constrain our door panel to those hinges. So the the hinge cuts we created on a door panel, we're just going to select that cut face there. And then I'm just going to constrain it to the flap on the hinge like that. Go apply. And then we just need to match the, the profile really from the cutout. So uh, I can't get a good view of that face, so I'm just going to go here, right click, select other, and then that face there. That's okay. And I'm just going to move it up a bit, and then I just need to match or mate this face with the internal face on the panel there. Okay, just like that. Okay, so that's fine. So that is finished. Now the bottom one, we also need to do that one. So. I'm just going to drag the hinge a little bit closed and then mate this face with that one. Okay, that's okay. So you'll notice it doesn't line up now. Uh, that's fine. That's not a problem. It's just because the size on the panel doesn't really match with the size on the frame. So one of the rules that we're going to create would basically fix that issue. Okay, so we're just going to continue. And then um, I think our door panel is, is fixed to the to the frame, that's fine. Okay, All right, and then we just want to constrain our handles. Uh, so you'll see the back of the handle here, the back plate. We're just going to take that and mate it to the face of the door. Okay, and then what we want to do is you'll see on on these models there is a cylindrical edges that you can use there to basically align with the hole like this. Okay, so we're just going to go okay. I'm just going to flip this around just like that. And then I just need to fix the orientation to the door panel. So I'm just going to apply the first solution angle and then that face with this one here. Okay. So then that's fixed to the door panel. That's fine. And then we're going to do the same to the other side. Okay. So just make them like that. They use the cylindrical face there to the hole, apply. Uh, and then the first solution angle like that. That's okay. All right. So then that one is also fully constrained. All right. And then next up is the backing plate. So I'm just going to use the insert constraint. And then these are our backing plates. So I'm just going to select any one, just the outer edge like this. And then I'm going to go to the hole in the frame. So this hole here. So on the internal side of the 
frame we're just gonna match it to that edge there gonna go apply and then once again i just want to fix the orientation just like that okay and then it's fixed okay so next up is our door lock so i'm just going to grab one and then i want to constrain the back of the flange on the lock here i want to constrain that to the inset face we created on a panel okay so if you just look at it now the orientation needs to be adjusted because if you close the door so if you shut the door this way so if you just close it then you need the leading part on the lock to slide over the edge of the frame here okay so if you leave the orientation like this it will just basically bang against the pin and it will not really lock okay so we need to flip this around 180 degrees so i'm just going to mate this face with that one okay so you notice the the lead in orientation changed so i'm also going to constrain the top side so then this is fixed so if you look at it now if you close it the lead in would basically slide over the edge of the of the frame so that's fine okay and then we need to take the latch so you'll see the two latches here so i'm also just going to take one and then i'm just going to put it against this face here okay so just to understand the latch we use to open the door okay from the inside of the door okay so if you on the outside you need a key and then if you're on the inside you can just simply turn the knob on the latch here okay so the inside i basically consider the direction where the door opens so i consider this side here to be the inside okay and then this side here the outside so the inside needs the latch okay so then you don't need a key to open it so cylindrical to the hole uh, that's okay and then just the orientation that face and this face okay then that's fine All right and then we only need to constrain the key cover so the two key covers here all right so i'm just going to take the back side of the key cover and constrain it to this face and then also cylindrical to the hole apply and then orientation that face and this face and okay all right and then that's basically all the components all right so what we want to do is we want to constrain the angle of the door like this okay so now it's free and then we just want to constrain an angle constraint so that we can control the opening of the door okay so first up we're just going to open our parameter window and then we're going to say here add numeric and we're going to call this one opening underscore angle okay we need to change the unit type so i'm just going to click on that and then just type in deg so degree okay and then we're just going to set it up as 45 degrees for now all right and we can go down here and then we're just going to apply another constraint the angle first solution and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the frame and then the door panel and then just list parameters here on the opening angle okay and then we just go okay and now it's fixed all right so let's add some more parameters so we're just going to go back to the parameter window and then we're going to add a text parameter this one is going to be the door underscore handing and then here we're going to make it a multi-value so you would notice on the two parts the panel and the frame we just typed in lhs or rhs so here is where we actually want to select them so we're just going to make this a multi-value so where the value goes we're going to right click on that and say make multi-value and then here we're going to go lhs enter rhs okay and we just go to add so then it added the value here so the multi-value is now added to the parameter okay so we're just going to select rhs for now and then we're going to add another numeric parameter this one is going to be door underscore width 
right? We're going to set this one to 750. And then we're going to add another numeric door underscore height. And this one we're going to set to 2.2 meters. And then another numeric. This one is going to be wall underscore thickness. Okay. And this one we're also going to make a multi value uh, parameter. Then I'm just going to right click here and say make multi value. I'm going to get rid of the one millimeter, go delete. And then I'm just going to start adding my sizes here. The first one is 100 millimeter, enter, and then 110 millimeter, enter, and then 220, enter, 222, and then 330. Okay. You're more than welcome to add your own sizes here. It's just where I'm from. This is the common sizes we get. Okay, so I'm just going to hit add there and then I'm just going to go, okay. All right, I'm going to set this to 220 for now. We're going to add a, a different parameter now. This one is going to be a link parameter. So that little link button there, we're going to click on that one and then we're going to select the frame. Okay, and then go open. And then what we want to select is the reference parameter that we created, the one that we called half width. All right. So then you just click on the little yellow plus sign and then go OK. So I'll explain exactly what this, why we do the link parameter here. So we would create a rule and then I'll explain exactly where we would use link parameters and all that. Okay. I'm going to add another numeric. This one is going to be wall underscore opening underscore width. Okay. And this one is going to be a little formula. So the width, we're going to say here, half underscore width. So that's the half width that's being pushed by the part. Okay. And then we're just going to simply say times two and enter. So you see the value 844. So that's the 422 times two is 844 there. Okay. And then I'm just going to add another numeric. This one is wall underscore opening underscore height. Okay, and then this one is also going to be a little equation. So this one we're going to say here is the door underscore height plus 47. Just bear in mind that these two parameters here are for display purposes only. Okay, so on the form, we're just going to have the two values here just being displayed for these two parameters. Okay, we're going to go done. We're going to add our first rule. So the rules tab there on the blank space, right click, add rule. We're going to call this one parameter link. Go enter. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to push the parameters through to the parts. Okay. So the link parameter that we got here, that is a parameter being pulled by a part. Okay. So we only do push with the, with the rules, all right, and not pulling. It's just based on my experience. I had a lot of troubles trying to pull the information from the, from the parts by using the iLogic rules. Okay. So I'll just give you an example in, the, in a little bit um, as I go on. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a description. So it's going to be a, a single quote and then a frame. Okay. So this is just better to identify a little group of rules. Okay. So this is just going to be single line rules here. And then you just split the, the groups up by these little descriptions here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab the frame part there. I'm just going to expand it. Okay. And then you'll see the user parameters under the frame. So the first one I need is the wall thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on wall thickness there. And you'll notice that it says parameter frame one wall thickness. Okay. So this is the part and this is the parameter for that part. Okay. Then we're just going to go equal. And then under our door, our assembly, the user parameters there, the wall thickness, we also double click on that. Okay. So what we have here is it's the 
the parameter that's going to be pushing the value over to the part. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this down and delete that part there and then just add it in front. Wall thickness there and go equal. So remember the link parameter that we got here. So this in theory is the same as the link parameter there. So it's saying that set the value for the wall thickness based on that parameter over there. Okay. But this doesn't work so well, uh, just based on my experience. Um, it's very glitchy and all that. It, for some reason, the, the invented tree doesn't work that way so well. Okay. So the best practice is when you pull information from the parts, use the link parameters. And if you push the information to the parts, use the iLogic rules here. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this part. I'm going to add the second one. And this one is going to be the door width. So we're going to go to frame, user parameters, door width, double click, equals, and the assembly user parameters, door width. All right. And then next is going to be the door height. So frame user door height equals the user for the assembly door height. And then the last one is the door handing, door handing there equals user parameters door handing. Okay. So this is all we need for the frame. And then next up is the door panel. This only has three. So I'm just going to minimize the frame and then maximize the, the door panel, door panel, the bottom one there. Okay, and then the first thing we need here is the width. So double click width equals assembly user, the width there. And then the next uh, user parameters there is the height equals the height there. And then the last one is the handing. If I just find it there, handing and equals the door handing here. Okay, so this rule is finished. This is all we need. Okay, so I'm just going to go save and run. Okay, go update. So you notice that the model actually updated as well. So the size has changed and all that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is rename our parts here on the browser tree here. It's just better for us to identify it for our next rule. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the first hinge, this one here. So you notice it highlights on the browser there. So we're going to rename that one. That's going to be RHS top. Okay, hinge, right hand side top. I just want to make sure we are on the right hand side. Yep, that's right hand side. And then the bottom hinge here would be RHS bottom. Okay, and then the latch, that is the latch RHS, and then the lock RHS, and the key cover RHS, and then the backing plate here RHS. Okay, I think that's all of them. I just want to make sure I'm just going to highlight every one here, there's no RHS against those, so that's fine. Okay, so we're ready to, to add our second rule. So we're just going to go ahead and add it here, and we're going to call it handing control RHS. Okay. And then we're just going to start with an if statement. So we're going to say if the door underscore handing equals in quotes RHS then okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna suppress parts here on these if statements here and then also the constraints that goes with those parts okay so because it's gonna be constraints under the parts as well I also just wanna make a description for each one so the first one I'm gonna start with is the top one that we have the first one is the the hinge right hand side top. So I'm just going to right click on that one and go capture current state. 
Okay, I'm just going to give it a space, move it to the next line. I'm going to copy this description there, copy that, and then single quote and paste. Okay, so then we have a description for, for this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to go enter and then expand that one. And then all the, the constraints for this part, I'm also going to list them down here. Okay, so I'm just going to right click on the first one, capture, right click, capture, and just keep on doing it for all the constraints. Okay, and then I'm just going to move them up. So I just tap just to make it look a little bit better. All right, and then so what we have is the constraints pertaining to the part here. Okay, so this is the right hand side hinge, and we said if the door handing is right hand side. Okay, so what this entails is the, we select right hand side, okay? And this is a right hand side hinge. So we're saying the component is active. In other words, it's unsuppressed if it's true and is active if it's false, then it's suppressed, all right? So in this case, all of these needs to be true because we do select right hand side, okay? So that's the first part, and then we're just going to add the second one. So the second right hand side is this one here. Right click, capture current state. Also just expand it and capture all the constraints for it. And then just move them up. Okay, and then I'm just going to grab the description, copy that, single quote, paste. Okay, and that's the second one done. And then the next RHS we have is this one here, door lock packing plate. Right click and capture. And then expand, capture the constraints. And move them up. Copy description. Okay, next one is the door lock key cover. Okay, all the constraints. the description and that was the key cover and then we have the latch and the description okay and then I think the last one is the door lock oops wrong place so yeah, this is very important um, where your mouse is. If you do capture current states and the double clicking and all that, it would basically enter it in a in a space or the the position where you last left your mouse. Okay, so I'm just leaving my mouse or the entry in this position. I'm just going to capture it then there. Move them up. And then just the description. Okay. And then that's basically the, the first condition here. And then we're going to extend the condition. I'm going to say else. I'm going to copy everything. And then paste it under else. Okay. And then at the right, at the bottom, we're going to say end if. All right. And then what we want to do is change all these values to false. So if it's not right hand side, else, then everything else must be false. Okay, so there's a quick way to do it. You can either do it like this, just highlight it and go false. But there is a quicker way. We're going to use the search and replace. We're going to find true. We're going to replace it with false. Okay, just make sure your mouse is just before the next true. So I'm just going to go after else, and then I'm just going to say find next. So it highlights the first true it sees. Then I'm just going to say replace and keep on hitting replace until the bottom. Okay, and then you jump right back to the top and highlight the first true. So we want this to be true and not false. So we can just leave it there. Okay, and then this rule is finished. Okay, so just to see if our rule works, so we're going to go to our parameters window. We're going to select here on the handing the LHS, and what we're expecting to see 
is the right hand side components to suppress. Okay, so we're going to go to left hand side. Let's keep an eye here and they suppress. So let's just go and look. All the right hand side components are suppressed. Okay, and also if you just expand one of them, you'll see the the constraints suppressed as well. Okay, so that's fine. So the only one that we need to suppress still is the angle, the opening angle on the door panel. So if we just go down here, the angle six here, the 45 degree opening angle here, we also need this to be suppressed based on the handing. So if we just go back to the handing controls here, and we're just gonna go to the bottom of the first condition, we can say here, opening angle, and then go find that constraint, the angle six here, right click and capture current state. Okay, so that's fine. I'm gonna copy it and go right down to the bottom and then just change it to false. Okay, so if I hit save and run now here, you'll see the angle six there would suppress. Okay, so I'm just gonna go save and run and it's suppressed there. Okay, so this means our model is now free from any constraints and we can basically now go ahead and do the the left hand side okay so we're just going to go ahead and start constraining the components all right so i'm just going to start again with the hinges okay the interface the bump face there and then this face mate to that face apply the flush constraint there Okay, and then the same with the bottom one. Uh, the bump there. Apply and then this one to that one. And flush here. Okay, just open them slightly. Okay, so that's fine. And then next is our door panel. So the door panel there, the groove. Let's bring it closer. Okay. Then the bottom face there. Okay, this, this hinge is now fully constrained there. Do the bottom one here. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, and then we're just gonna do the lock. Okay, so if we just look at the orientation of the lock, this one would be fine. So if you shut it close, it would basically slide over the edge of the frame. So our leading direction is right. Okay, so I'm just gonna constrain it in place. Okay, and then it's our, uh, let's just do our backing plate insert constraint. And then just the orientation again. Okay, and then the latch. And then also orientation. And then lastly, our key cover. Just orientation and then that's everything we need okay so everything seems to be okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the angle constraint for this side as well so I'm just gonna go angle 
an opening angle there. The sequence, how I selected this was wrong. So I just need to change the sequence. So I'm just going to hit two and one. And then one, I'm going to select as the face of the door panel and two is the frame. And then select opening angle and then it's fine now. So I'm just going to go OK. All right. So everything seems to be fine. OK, so I'm just going to go and change the names or rename the the parts here as well. So this would be the hinge left hand side top. This would be the hinge left hand side bottom. Handles doesn't need replacing. So the backing plate is also left hand side key cover left hand side, the latch as well, and the door lock, and that's everything we need. Okay, so the handy controls right hand side rule we created, we're going to do the same for the left hand side as well. So I'm just going to open the rule here, and I'm going to select all and copy, and then close and then add another rule and this would be handing control left hand side and I'm just gonna simply paste the rule in okay and then all I'm gonna do is just get rid of all the constraints because the constraints hasn't been renamed they they just follow a sequence so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of all of them And then lastly, this one. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now is go to search and replace, and I'm going to find right hand side and replace it with left hand side. Okay, and then I'm going to say here replace all in this rule. If you accidentally hit the replace all in all rules, it would take everything on the other rules and it will also change it or replace it with what you specify. Okay, so we're just going to hit here replace all in this rule okay so you notice everything is now left hand side all right and then i'm just going to add the constraints manually for all these so the first one was the left hand side top this one so i'm just going to add all of them and then the left hand side bottom And then we have backing plate and the backing plate and then we have the key cover and then we have the latch And then the door lock. And lastly, we know we need the opening angle. So on a door panel, the last angle here. And that's fine. I'm just going to delete everything for the else extension. I'm just going to copy these like that. I know it looks a little bit messy, but I'm not going to spend time now to, to neaten it up. So all I'm going to do is like before, so I'm just going to replace the true with the false, okay, mouse just after else and go find next and just start hitting replace. All right. And that's everything we need for this rule. So I'm just going to go and save and run. All right. And then we're just going to go to the parameter door handling and we're going to change it to right hand side. We're just going to look at the, the browser bar. We're expecting those left hand sides to suppress. 
okay so you can see all the left hand side components that suppress all right and then we're going to go back to left hand side okay so what we need to do is i'm just going to close the door so i'm just going to make the opening angle to zero so if you look at the door you'll see the door doesn't match the frame all right so what we need to do is we need to add an equation to the parameter link here okay and that would only pertain to the door panel so what we're going to do is we're going to take the door width we're going to say plus 25.2 and then on the height, also plus 9.2. So you can have equations within your rules like this. Okay. So what we're saying is we're going to set the, the door panel width parameter based on what we enter for the door width in this model. And then automatically it's going to take whatever we enter in this model and just add 25.2 millimeters to that. Okay. And then I'm just going to go save and run and we will see the door panel update as well. Okay. So I'm just going to hit here the update button. And you notice it goes and matches the frame. Okay. So that looks all right. And then everything else seems to be aligning. So that's perfect. Okay. Okay, so next up, we're going to do a, another rule. So we're just going to go add a new rule. This one, we're going to call limits. So the first rule we want to add is to limit our door opening to the maximum. So if we go to the user parameters and we change the opening angle to anything more than 180, then we just basically want the rule to take it back down to 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to start with if. We're going to say the opening angle, right click, capture current state, is more than 180 degrees. Then, then I'm just going to copy the line here. Then I'm going to say make the opening angle equal to 180 degrees and then also we want to limit the minimum angle as well so we're just going to copy all this and i'm going to go here and say else if the opening angle is less than zero degrees then we want to make the angle zero degrees okay and then go and if Okay, then next we want to control or limit the maximum height of the door. So just restricts us from making the door too tall. All right, so I'm just going to start again with if the door height, uh, door height there, is more than, let's say, three meters, then we want to make the door height equal to three meters again. Okay. And then also we want to display a message just to tell us that we are more than three meters tall. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a message here. So message box show. Okay. And then in the message, we're going to say setting door height to three meters and then the title we're going to say door to tall okay and then we're going to say well i'm going to copy all this i'm going to paste it down and i'm going to say here else if the door is less uh, less than 1.8 meters okay then it's too short then we're going to make it 1.8 meters tall and then we're going to say here setting door height to 1800 and we're going to say the door is too short 
Okay, and then lastly, and if, and then the last one we're going to add is the width of the door. So we're going to say again if the door width is more than a meter, then I'm just going to copy this again. The door width is equal to a meter. Okay. And then we're going to do another message box. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm just going to say here, setting door width to one meter. Okay. And the title door is too wide. Okay. And then we're going to do the same with the minimum width. Okay. So I'm just going to go less. Uh, this should be else less than 700. Then we make it 700 and then setting door width to 700 as well. And door is too narrow. Narrow. Okay. And then we're going to go and if, uh, not end, end, and if, okay. And this is the rule for the limits we're going to apply for this model for now. And then we can just go ahead and test it. So we have one on the opening angle, one on the, the height, and then one on the width. Okay, so let's just go ahead and test those. I'm going to go save and run. And then I'm just going to go to the parameters. I'm going to change the angle to 220 degrees. So it made it 180. Okay, so there's 180 from that frame over there. All right. And then we're also going to go less than zero. So I'm just going to make this minus 45 and it changes it right back to zero. So that's fine. Okay. And then we also set the width, right? So we had a minimum. Uh, let's go to 500. So we're expecting it to show the message and then set it to 700. So I'm just going to go enter. So here's our message. Now, if we go, okay, it's going to set it right back to 700. Okay. So that works fine. And then also we had the width maximum. So we're going to go to 1.5 meters. And then also door is too wide, setting the door width to one meter. We go, okay. Then it made it one meter. Okay. So that's fine. And then the height as well. So we, we had the height at three meters. So I'm just going to go to 3.5 as a maximum. And then the same door too tall. All right. And then set it right back to three meters. And then the, the minimum height, the minimum height was 1.8 meters. So I'm just going to go to one five and then it says too short, setting to 1.8 and it set it right back to 1.8. Okay, so it seems like our limits works very well. So I'm just going to go done. And this is the first part for our model. And um, I hope uh, it helped you quite a lot. And then in part two, we'll pick up with uh, adding a form to this model. So we'll just have a custom form that's going to be driving our parameters, right? So that would help us by building the form to get into the user interface with this model. Okay, so that would be a very nice one to apply to, to the model as well. If you can use this model in your library or for your projects, and you are interested in building the model further, then um, please hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon. Then you can get notified when those videos um, becomes available. Um, I am terribly sorry for the length of this video. However, I don't see another way of making them shorter. I don't want to stop the video midway from creating the model. Um, so I hope you, you stuck through this. So please just use the document um, if you do get stuck um, or if you don't want to watch the video again. Uh, the, the document would help you quite a lot with that as well. So I hope sincerely you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope I see you in the next one.